Yo, what's up YouTube? What's going on today? Welcome back to the channel. So we got the spoilers for Boruto 2 Blue Vortex Chapter 10 and bro, they are greasy right now. We got some greasy shit and that greasy shit being Inojin's death, Serata versus Hidari, and lastly, Kurama and Himawari. That's some greasy shit. So before we get into this chapter, thanks to Ghost aka Itachi Fualis on X, he has some of the pages translated or if you want to check out the full raw scans, you can go to mangaspoilers.net they have the whole thing untranslated so right now i got about 28 pages translated and the rest we're gonna have to go off the raws but let's get into it the chapter starts off with team 10 and himawari running away from jura jura says that it's useless to run away konohamaru decides to pull up on jura and hidari though i'm be honest i don't know what konohamaru can do against these twos because my man has taken l's left and right shikamaru tells kawaki and everybody that himawari is their target boruto seems to be listening but it looks like boruto can't do anything looking at the of Boruto, Boruto does seem to be talking to somebody because if you look at the bottom left corner, it says Sai and yeah. So it looks like Boruto is talking to Caution Koji, most likely. So then in the next panels, Shikamaru tells Kawaki to leave Boruto and head to where Himawari and the intruders are. He says that Himawari is in danger. Kawaki says that if Himawari is in danger, he should have said that sooner. Kawaki instantly leaves to the battlefield. He doesn't care for anything else but to save Himawari. This tells me that Kawaki isn't so bad in his nature. Like, I know he wants to kill Boruto, but deep down, he does care for Himawari. So then the panels cut back to Boruto and it looks like Boruto is kind of hurt by his karma meaning he can't move his arm right now. I think this is the same thing that happened when Boruto first activated the karma. His whole arm went numb. But look at this panel it does seem that Boruto is worried and that he wants to get on the battlefield but because of his karma being activated he does not want to be near anyone. Because of what we get right here Shikamaru says Boruto are you all right what happened? It doesn't look like Boruto is responding back to Shikamaru but rather Boruto is talking to Kashin Koji and either Boruto or Kashin Koji say take some rest it'll be fine. I think Koji is telling Boruto don't worry the seal or whatever is not going to break on your arm you should be fine in a little bit which is why Boruto can't go after Himawari. We can see his facial expression he looks like he's pissed he wants to do something but he can't. This also tells me that there is some sort of seal on Boruto's arm and it looks like Koji or Orochimaru did put a blocker or a seal to stop Momoshiki from coming out and that if Boruto's karma activates there's a chance the seal could break which explains why Boruto ran away from Kawaki last chapter. So right now I do believe there is something suppressing Momoshiki and I think the only time we're gonna see Momoshiki is when that seal breaks and that's only gonna happen when Kawaki decides to pursue after Boruto and the karma keeps resonating. That is the time we're gonna see Momoshiki and at that time something devious is gonna happen with Boruto. Momoshiki might take Boruto's body and destroy everything because right now Boruto is one of the strongest and Momoshiki having control of Boruto is gonna put him in a very dangerous spot. So then in the next pages Jura leaves Konohamaru and the other shinobi and decides to go after Himawari. Hidari decides to confront these two shinobis. Konohamaru then asks the sensory team where is Sasuke and they say Sasuke is right in front of him and I think this right here triggers something in Konohamaru's mind telling him that Sasuke has been bitten by the tree and this intruder he sees is Sasuke. At that moment Sarada and Sumire pull up and instantly Hidari goes into attack mode. He instantly uses his belt which he got from Code to go right behind Sarada and at that moment he uses Chidori on Sarada which then she responds with her Sharingan and dodges Hidari's attack and at that moment she decides to use her own Chidori and instantly attack Hidari and she inflicts damage on him. This right here tells me that Sarada is stronger than base Kawaki. Base Kawaki could not take on Hidari or Jura let alone hurt them and right now Sarada with just her regular Sharingan and a Chidori has damaged Hidari. This is a throwback to the moment Sarada used Chidori on Boro. This is literally the same type of panel. But in this panel, her Chidori inflicts damage to Hidari and Hidari falls on the ground in which Sarada looks at Hidari saying, wait a minute, that was my papa's jutsu. How are you using that? Who are you? And Hidari's just looking at her. I think there is going to be more of a battle between the two, though this is the last we see of them in this chapter. Though there's one thing I want to point out in page 10 and that is when Hidari comes up behind Sarada. If you look at his hand, his hand looks exactly like Itachi when Itachi was going to take out Sasuke's eye. He literally has the two fingers up and the thumb at the bottom. It looks like he's about to take Sarada's eyes but instead decides to use a Chidori on her. So that could low-key be a little semblance to the Sasuke Itachi fight. So then getting on we get the interactions between baby Kurama and Himawari and Himawari questions Kurama saying aren't you the one who's supposed to be with my dad? Why are you here? What you see is a mere visualization of our thoughts. We are conversing in each other's consciousness because you and I are one mind one body. This tells us that this 
Princess Kurama was not forcibly put inside of Himawari, nor is she like any previous Chinchurikis. She is one with Kurama. Because Kurama states later in this chapter that she was born with a fragment of Kurama inside of her. And Kurama says, the light of my life has gone out, but the deaths of us bijus aren't eternal. Even if our bodies and soul perish, we will certainly come back to life again. The essence will reappear and we will resurrect. This right here confirms to us that killed beasts can never die. This shuts down a bunch of theories people have talked about over the last three years that Kurama is dead dead. Now we know that Kurama is back to life and that tail beast can never really die. Though it makes me question on what Kurama said to Naruto saying, Naruto, if you don't take care of yourself, you're going to end up joining me. But we know that Kurama comes back to life. Does that mean that Naruto's Loki eternal as well? It could be a possibility. He could be just like Hagoromo and he could literally spawn himself if his chakra lingers around. Because Naruto is half of the sage. Him and Sasuke are literally half and half of Hagoromo. So it could make sense that Kishimoto is trying to make Naruto and Sasuke eternal. So then Kurama says you're his daughter to think how this world is truly unpredictable. He says were you born with a fragment of my chakra or is it the blood of Naruto and Hinata that flows through you or is it fate? This is important because this tells us that Himawari was born with a fragment of Kurama. That means it didn't go to Boruto or possibly it could have gone to Boruto but because of Momoshiki overriding Boruto's DNA and chakra over time that fragment of Kurama was gone. And I actually said this last chapter as well that picture that Kishimoto showed us years ago with Boruto and KCM that is actually a foreshadow that when Boruto gets back to normal and his original body comes back we might have that Kurama that's supposed to be inside of Boruto reappear but because Boruto became a new type of person and a new Atsusuki because his whole DNA got overridden that fragment disappeared and Kurama went on to the next person with a fragment of his chakra and that being Himawari that explains how Kurama was able to come back to life and this time Kurama was implanted inside of Himawari he was born with her this also brings up some other thoughts and that being that Naruto and Hinata were experimenting with Himawari. This tells me that Naruto went in KCM mode with Hinata. They were doing some freaky shit bro. That's all I'm gonna say. They were doing some freaky freaky shit. Because right now I don't know who's the father. Kurama or Naruto. But that just tells me that they weren't experimenting with Boruto. Naruto just wanted to get it on after the last movie. But with Himawari bro there was a fucking gangbang that went on bro. That was a gangbang. Alright. Himawari is a product of a gangbang. And that gangbang insisted of Naruto and Kurama dog. That's some fucked up shit. Alright so enough of that. Kurama says well it doesn't matter. The result is clear. I don't care what happened. Hurry up and accept the situation. Yo 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 hola 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 hola. Did you hear what my man just said? He's like it doesn't matter what the situation is. Bro I'm pretty sure Ikimoro's like yo I know these guys got some next thoughts in their mind and I'm gonna fuck with them when they're reading this. What Kurama just said to us is Kishimoto's words saying dog that shit happened alright. That shit happened. But he's like don't worry about it bro it happened it happened. We must keep moving forward don't you agree? Himawari says I am pleased to meet you Kurama. So then Himawari snaps back to reality. Oh, there goes gravity. And it looks like Jura is on their tail and he decides to use Hill Beast Bomb on Inojin's bird. At that very moment, Chocho decides to transform her fat ass and they impact the ground. Bro, she made a big ass fucking crater right there, dog. You guys see that shit? Jeez. All right, all jokes aside, Chocho actually did the right thing and she was able to save everybody by taking the impact of the ground. Jura literally spawns up behind them. The guy was not even trying. He literally had his hands in his pocket the whole time and tells them, bro, it's a shame. You guys are a good team, but you guys are about to die. Himawari is calling out to Kurama and Kurama's not doing anything. Kurama then says, quit being such a brat. There's nothing else to do, just you. This is Himawari trying to rely on Kurama, but what Kurama is trying to tell her is that him and her are one being and that she doesn't have to ask him to use his power. Rather that she has to summon the power herself, which is why he says, whether my power is used or wasted, it's all dependent on you. Himawari says that even if you say that, what do I do? He says, I got it. Your chakra is greater than all of your predecessors and it got a high affinity with my chakra. In that regard, even surpasses Naruto Uzumaki. This tells us that Himawari's chakra is much better than Naruto and that every single predecessor that Kurama had, she surpasses all of them. Though it makes me wonder, does Kurama retain his memories? Because Kurama isn't even sure on how Himawari has a fragment of his chakra inside of her. So I think this Kurama may get his memories back in a little bit. Though he knows the general idea that he was the predecessor of Naruto. Because at first he didn't even recognize Himawari, but then he's like, wait a minute, you're his daughter. The Kurama we saw before Baryon mode, he knew who Himawari was. But then again, bro, he is her dad, bro. <laughs> we don't know, all right? We don't know who the father is right now. So then Himawari jumps right into the battle and decides to go attack Jura. Bro, Jura literally grabs her by the foot and boom, twists that shit like a cinnamon roll, bro. Yo, that shit got destroyed, bro. You see her foot? Mmm, that shit gotta hurt her. He twisted her foot like a fucking Play-Doh, bro. That's fucked up. Himawari is then lying on the ground and Inochin loses his shit and decides to attack Jura. Jura literally does 
doesn't even acknowledge Inojin. Jiro decides to pull out his hard wood and suck in Himawari. Moving on to the Raws because the rest isn't translated yet. Himawari looks like she's scared and Inojin decides to attack Jora even when Shikadai tells him don't do it. This tells me that there is something brewing between Inojin and Himawari because he attacks him knowing that he is gonna lose. He's trying to save her no matter what. Jora literally pins down Inojin and Inojin tries to touch his foot and boom Jora gives him his big hard long wood and it goes right through Inojin. That shit pierces right through him bro. He literally got penetrated from the front no hesitation. Look at that hole bro. I just wonder how Ino is gonna feel because she's reading everybody's chakra and everything like that. How is she gonna feel that her own son's chakra is starting to fade? I think she's gonna jump into battle and if she jumps into battle we know Sakura is gonna come as well. Which tells me we might get a mother daughter combo with Sakura coming back asking for child support from Hidari. But bro looking at Inojin yo this guy got taken out bruh. My man got fucking pierced bro. Like I don't know what my guy was thinking. My guy literally thought he could take on Jura. Just because these mans took on a few clog rams they thought they could take on divine trees. Yo these mans played themselves. So Himawari sees Inojin dying or maybe he's fucking dead. I don't know right now but like I think he's dead. She decides to burst out into her nine tails form. This is a callback to the pain fight when Naruto witnessed Hinata die by pain. This is the same thing where Himawari has witnessed Inojin die. So I'm telling you there is some sort of ship sailing between the two. So Himawari transforms. We get to see her new tailed beast form and I'm not gonna lie this does look like Kushina's nine tail form. Which brings me to the last page and this page has been translated. That's saying angry hair strikes heaven. Himawari awakens. For the sake of your friends stand up for yourself. Jura says what a sudden change and Kurama says looks like you lost your temper. Take this. Let's see if we can cause some real chaos. Himawari. This tells us that we're gonna get a battle of Himawari versus Jura. Yo I wonder how strong this Himawari is gonna be. Yo if she takes down Jura or even gives him the works I'm telling you Kawaki ain't shit. All right, <laughs> if she takes down Jura next chapter, yo, she's above base Kawaki. We're getting some juicy ass shit. Now, one thing I want to point out about this translation at the very top, it says angry hair strikes heaven. That could be a call out to Kushina saying that her hair resembles Kushina and Kushina is in heaven supposedly. Her angry hair strikes heaven and thus she looks like Kushina when Kushina uses Kurama's chakra. So this is a throwback to that. So this chapter was pretty juicy. Yo, we're going to get some even greasier shit next chapter. I can't wait wait for that. Mmm, shit is cooking. So that's it for this video. Let's wait till the full translation comes out. Right now, this is translated by Itachi Fualis and you can check out the Raws on MangaSpoiler.net. So thanks for watching. Please comment, like, and subscribe and stay tuned for more videos to come.